Good morning, everybody. Um, I spent this morning at my siblings' cross-country meet, which was really fun to watch. And now that all the moisture is gone out of the air, we are ready to cut soybeans. Um, last night we got about 50 acres cut out, which was pretty impressive, in my opinion. For the first day of harvest, I feel like there's always like some kinks that need to be worked out. Um, but dad and I got into a really good routine where he could take a truck in and then I would get out of the grain cart and hop in the combine, fill the grain cart and the combine. He'd come back with the truck, we'd fill the truck, he'd go back. It worked out pretty well. So we're just gonna get things fired up. Dad's gonna start out in the combine. I'm gonna start out in the green cart. And I think we have a special delivery coming later today. So keep your eyes out for that. We've got the Case IH 7230. Everything's warming up. American flag on top. We are ready to pick some beans. I thought this would be kind of cool to share. Um, a combine is called a combine because it combines a whole bunch of jobs or tasks into one machine. So there's a whole bunch of different brands. We just happen to have a case on our farm, um, but it is simultaneously cutting the plant. The head is, it has a whole bunch of like V-shaped little, um, they're called uh, sickles and they run like this back and forth. And so they cut the bean plant off like right at the ground or as close to the ground as you can. And then the inner workings of the combine are what is going to open up the bean pod, separate um, all of the trash, anything that's not the beans, and that's going to be chopped up and put spread out like behind the combine. Everything's all separated inside. And then the beans are separated and taken augered up and sit in the hopper on the top of the combine. And then once the hopper on the combine gets like three quarters to almost all the way full, I come up next to dad and he puts his auger out or whoever's running the combine. And all of that clean grain is augered into the green cart. And then I will drive over to a truck and I fold out this auger, it folds up like this, and I auger all that clean grain into the truck. As I go to pick up dad, I'll show you what the inside of my cab looks like. I'm a little embarrassed, I'll be honest. It's a, it's much messier than I'd like. So to start off, uh, we have our first radio. Uh, this we only use if dad's in the other tractor because the other tractor is the only one that has this Midland radio in it. So that's, that's one way for us to communicate. Then uh, this is our main form of communication here, are these Motorola radios, and I like this. This is actually a phone mount, it's a RAM mount, it's what I use to hold my phone. I have one over there too when I'm filming. Then this is my scale, it's hooked up to the grain cart, and that tells me how much weight in um, actual grain I have back there. So right now I've got 27,000 pounds, and that's from the last of whatever dad picked last night after I left. This is an auto steer monitor, but we don't run auto steer in our combine or our grain cart tractor. There's another phone mount. Um, this stuff is leftover from planting. We just uh, kind of never took it out. This is a mess. I'm very sorry, but I've got some snacks and some empty water bottles, my real water bottle. Um, this is a monitor I use to check on the tractor. And this is another monitor I use to check on the tractor got right now going this speed consistently I'm using 5.5 gallons an hour kind of nifty and then I have my big Yeti cooler with all my snacks in it and assorted tools and discarded trash I'm thinking I would like to move this up here in the buddy seat since I don't have anyone riding with me and put a trash can down there I think that would be helpful but like I said it's only the second day so I'm still kind of getting my group back getting a feel for what I need and what I want I have actually the, do you remember the time that I spilled all that green on top of the truck? Yeah, I was wearing noise canceling earpods then. This is so relaxing and satisfying, but the problem is I usually drive, I listen to the combine when I'm driving. So I don't know how much horsepower I'm using. It just feels so good. 
that we are typically working with are either 80 acres or 160 acres. So right now we're in a 160 acre field um, and it lines up in squares. We all work on a grid system. And so in each square mile, there's usually four 160 acre fields. Does that make sense? All right, everyone quick break from our regularly scheduled programming to show you the surprise delivery. This is a mother bin. It's like the biggest grain cart ever, but it's meant not to be hauled around. You can't haul it around, but it sits at the end of the field and then you can fill it and fill it and fill it, which will be really, really nice because it's just dad and I. So we need all the help we can get. So this will be great. I can be in the combine and I can be filling this or filling the grain cart and I could be running trucks. I think it's going to work pretty well. Pretty nifty, right? Get this thing off the trailer here. 4,000 bushels. Can you believe that? That's wild. And we are back to our regularly scheduled programming. 106 degrees outside, everyone. 
That's hot, hot, hot. I'm getting a little bit concerned because it's very hot outside, obviously. Um, but there's a forecast of rain for the next three days and very cool temperatures, like in the 50s. And whenever you see a big cool down like that, I feel like it always brings storms with it. So I'm really hoping, honestly, no rain would be ideal so that we can continue harvesting. But if there was gonna be any rain, I hope it's just a nice, easy, gentle one and it doesn't bring any wind or hail with it because that would be very bad. I feel like people think that things being push start is like a new thing, but no. Oh, there we go. Push start has been around, okay? So the idea of this mother bin is it can kind of replace or at least help out with the green cart and the trucks. So when I'm full and dad's gone, I can just dump into here. And this is the equivalent of essentially four semi trucks. And then you can load trucks. Um, you just have a semi truck pull up on the other side there, auger fold out, and you can fill the semi trucks from there. It's pretty cool. It makes it so dad and I can go and go and go and go. And then uh, eventually when we get some hired truck drivers out here, then they can be loading themselves from here and dad and I can just keep going in the combine and the grain cart. It's like a bin or like a grain system that sits out in the field. While they are getting that set up, I wanted to actually show you what we're harvesting. Um, it's 106 degrees outside right now, so that's why I'm walking around in shorts, but these things are pretty sharp, kind of pokey. Um, uh, this field actually isn't quite ready yet. The stalks are a little bit green yet, but here is our soybeans and the pods were breaking open. Let's see here if I can get one out one handed. Here we go. There's our soybean. And you know if they're ready or not, you put one in your mouth, you put it on your back teeth and you squish it. If it pops open, it's like kind of crispy then it's ready. This is still kind of chewy. Not quite ready yet, but soon, very soon. So here's what we're working with. All the leaves have dropped. These are just useless stuff to run through the combine. So all we're left with is just the stock and the soybeans. I said useless stuff. The stems and the leaves are not useless. I said useless stuff. The, st the stems and the leaves are not useless. The plant obviously needs that to grow, like, you know, photosynthesis and all of that. Um, but I mean, now that the plant has reached its full maturity and it's no longer putting any more weight or mass on the beans, it has no use for photosynthesis. So all that drops off and the bean plant dries down and then we're able to harvest it. Dad stopped and he lifted the reel up and pushed it in, which didn't even have to say anything, means something broke. So this is, you could call this our first breakdown, um, but one of those little sickles, they just get worn out because they're cutting against really tough beans. And so one of the bolts probably just sheared right off. This is a pretty like common thing. It's not like a big deal. So we have replacements. We've got a big toolbox on the combine with everything we need, even a Milwaukee impact. Um, and so with dad and I both working on it, it shouldn't take very long to fix. And here it is. Didn't even fall on the ground. 
I knew it. Just sheared right off. This one looks pretty worn out anyways. It's not even really that sharp, but I will say this is pretty dangerous. This is how people lose fingers. So uh, dad and I are both being very, very careful and safe and uh, keep your fingers out of pinchy spots. Just uh, err on the side of caution. I think we're pretty good at this. Pretty efficient. Here we go. Oh, yes. So this and this and this. Here's a sickle bar. You can see it's just kept on with these little bolts. And then um, sometimes before you can pound them out, you have to move them out of the way from these things. And so you open up the side and this big belt, I'm not going to touch it because dad's working over there right now, but you go this way or that way and it moves the bar back or forth. Not even five minutes. And we are back up and running. of fuel in and we are back ready to go I also grabbed some drinks for dad and I some waters and some energy sounds like we're gonna go late tonight back in the farmyard because dad is going to take a truck in and the combine was a flashing last bar of fuel so it's being fueled up and while it's being fueled up I'm going to clean out the air filter with this handy little tool. You just put the air hose on top and then this fits into the top of any filter and then it spins around. It's pretty cool. Combine is fueled up, so it is time to take over as CEO, as Grant would call it, Combine Executive Operator. <laughs> so let's get set up in the cab here. First thing, of course, adjust the steering wheel. There we go, much better. Key. On. Wait for this screen to load up and the air to kick on. So nice. Parking brake is going to come off and I'm gonna finagle this head out of that driveway. Okay, it took me a little bit since I'm doing it by myself, but I drove the combine out like a quarter of the way, went back, semi truck about a quarter of the way, went back, green cart went all the way down to the new cut I'm making because I started the pivot moving. Dad started the pivot moving on his phone and then I set a park angle on it. And so I'm just slowly shifting all the equipment over to this side of the field since dad is gone. So I'm going to be doing back doing what I was doing before this. So I'll cut a full swath down, a half swath back, and then I'll fill up the grain cart till it's full, fill up the truck till it's full, and then continue filling up the mother bin. And hopefully dad is back when I have a full truck. And then he can take that to town. That's the plan. Lots of logistics going on. Lots of walking by me. On the bright side, the sun is kind of, it's starting to go down and it is a beautiful harvest evening. It's very still. It's, it's not bad walking. I can't complain. So to get the combine going, here's what we do. We're about this much throttled up. 
and I'm going to start all the insides of the combine, all the separators, everything way back there, I'm starting. And I'm gonna let that run for just a tad little bit. And then I'm gonna idle up just a little bit more. I'm going to start the head. So here's everything turning. Got all those conveyor belts running. Just making sure. Okay, and now I'm going to idle all the way up. There you go. You can see my engine load there is at 50%. And then I start going into the field. Since I'm making a new cut, I can pretty much just pick wherever to go. And since we're not using auto steer, so I just get myself lined up. Looks like a pretty good spot to start right here. And I'm going to press this right here, which is going to put my whole head down to, it's like a, it's resume, that RES. And so it's already at a set height. And I'm gonna go nice and slow to start out with, just to get everything warmed up ease the machine into it. Going a little over one mile an hour right now. And then just slowly speed up until my engine load reaches about 80% and then I'll keep it right there. I don't listen to music in the combine because I'm listening to the machine. I'm listening for any weird clanks or strange sounds and my head is just constantly on a swivel like this, looking, seeing if it's plugging anywhere, indicating a broken sickle, um, if, we're, if we picked anything up with a head like a tree branch or a piece of concrete, God forbid, um, just scanning and looking, scanning and looking, and then keeping an eye on this monitor. Um, some things I am watching is the moisture and the engine load and uh, just, just keeping a general eye on things. We're full of fuel though, so that's good. I am of the mindset I would rather go slow and not break anything than be a speed demon and like have things falling all over the place. So, and I think the machine likes it when you just take it nice and easy and you're not going crazy. So, I'm just a slow and steady operator. Just keeping an eye on things, making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I need this. I need this girl to work. Okay. We need a safe and productive harvest. And to do that, I need to make sure this machine stays up and running as most, as much as possible. So slow and steady wins the race in my opinion in this case. The siblings got their homework done. They're done with school, done with sports practice. And so I've got Ethan, my younger brother running the grain cart for me, which is a super big help. So dad can stay on trucks and the combine can continue moving. Thanks, Ethan, really appreciate it. Look at those clouds. That is gorgeous. I wonder if it's gonna rain tonight. We have a beautiful, I guess the sun went down as I was driving east, but it's a lovely sunset we had. And uh, since the sun has gone down, it's cooled off considerably. I'm not having to run the air conditioning at like full blast anymore. Um, but things look good. We will continue cutting beans until um, the evening moisture rises in the atmosphere to the point where the combine can't handle it. The beans get too wet and tough and it's just really difficult on the machine and things start plugging up like the head, like the beans just bunch together and they're really difficult to cut. And so we will go until whatever point in time the uh, moisture in the atmosphere gets to be too much. But until then, we will keep going. Those of you who don't know, I'm married to a very, very wonderful guy. His name is Grant, and he farms as well. And he filmed a little bit of his day today. So while I continue doing this, we're gonna see what Grant did today. Got the grain cart on the field and with the big tires. Let's see how this works. Oh, he's waiting for me. Ah, it's the second full day of harvest, and it's the first day with this tractor, first day with this grain cart, and you know what I've done? I've made a giant, a giant mess. Look at that. Yeah, I forgot to close the trap in the bottom of the grain cart. So there's a hydraulic one that you use to control the flow to the auger, and then there's one underneath that to clean it out at the end of the year. Anyway, we left it open. So no uh, mold or anything would grow in the bottom. Anyway, but I forgot to shut it before I opened that hydraulic 
trap above it and so the truck was sitting right here i was sitting right here open it up and just dump right on the ground and guess who was there to watch it yep dad was sitting right there and he was waving his arms around so i gotta come back and clean that up later but I would guess that's got to be 100, 120 bushels. And 100 times what? 1450 a bushel for soybeans right now? That's, that's almost $1,500 laying there on the ground if it's 100 bushels. So, no bueno. It's another day, another uh, lunch review. Got some sweet peppers. Goldfish, oh man, snickerdoodles, ice pack, an apple, and a ham sandwich. Pretty solid lunch, if you ask me. So I come across the field with fuel trailer, and I get out and look at this. A flat tire, oh man, oh boy, look at that. Ooh, yeah, well. I guess this field is just full of metal. Yesterday, ran an electric fence post through the combine. Luckily, it didn't hurt anything but a sickle, but now a flat tire, you kidding me? Yeah, this is our farm's fuel trailer. It's not as fancy as Laura's, but it gets the job done. Been running this cart all day now. Love these big tires. Ethan and Adam turned in for the night. I'm still in the combine. I've got dad running grain cart for me and I think we're going to trade off. So I'll be back in the grain cart and he'll take over as combine operator. We've got a little draw through this field. You can see where the, that weeds, those weeds are. Um, and so you have to be pretty careful with the head because you don't want to run it into the ground. Dad looks like he's doing a pretty good job. As the day goes on, I've been on the phone with different people or filming all day long or talking on the radio with dad. Actually, that's probably the main part. Um, I am totally losing my voice. It's getting bad. This is only day two of harvest, you guys. I have 60,000 pounds in the grain cart, um, and I pulled up to the mother bin. So this holds 4,000 bushels, which is roughly equivalent to four truckloads. It's been very helpful today. Um, I put my auger out on the grain cart here, and what I'm going to do is switch this lever, push it down and push it forward. And that's gonna start my PTO shaft, which is right there. It spins really fast and then it works augers under there and in there and conveys the beans or augers the beans into there. So I'm at really low idle. I'm just gonna start that. And already some green is gonna come out. Ready? I haven't opened anything up yet. There we go. Now, I'm gonna pull forward because it looks like there's already a lot of grain there. You can just barely see it over the top. Pull forward. Okay, now, oh, that looks like there's enough grain there. And we're gonna start right here. And I'm just going to push this hydraulic down and that's going to open that little yellow indicator there at the base of the auger. And I'm going to idle up. And there we go. That's all you gotta do. Just watch it and make sure you don't spill anything. And then reverse all those steps in the backwards order to shut everything off. And that is that. I still have 30,000 pounds on the grain cart, but this mother bin is full. So dad is going to pick until, his, until the combine is full. Um, and I'm going to park this inside because it might rain tonight. We'll see. It 
And that is a wrap on today. So 10.30 on the dot, signing off, parking the green card inside. We'll see if we get any moisture tonight. I don't know, I've seen lightning, but also watching radar, I'm a little bit skeptical, but I guess we'll just have to see where it goes. Super, super productive day. We have the mother bin full, green cart still has soybeans in it, combine will be full, and we have two full trucks ready to go. So even if it does rain tomorrow, we can haul grain into the elevator and be ready when it dries up. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe um, to see more videos like this. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Bye.